I'm Henry Gilliland, the Mechatronic Specialist with Electric Supply and Equipment. In this video, I'm going to explain the purpose of the MAS instruction and show you how to properly implement it using ladder logic in Rockwell's Studio 5000 Logic Designer. But before we get going, please be sure to subscribe to ESNE TV to view more videos like this one. The MAS, or Motion Axis Stop, instruction is the integrated motion instruction that is used to stop a currently running motion instruction on a target axis. When the MAS is executed, it will stop all action of the selected instruction type. Let's take a look at the different components of the instruction. First, you have the axis field. This is where you will assign the axis that the instruction will target. Next, we have the motion control field. This is where a tag of type motion instruction will go. This is the tag that will be used by the processor to perform the functionality of the whole instruction. Next, there is the stop type field. This is the field that is used to select the type of motion instruction that you want to stop. There are several options to choose from. However, if all is selected, then the MAS will stop every motion instruction that is currently targeting this axis, regardless of type. There are many situations in which it is desired to stop one type of motion instruction, but not another. For instance, it may be required to disengage an electronic gear instruction without stopping the movement of the axis. In this case, you would simply select a stop type of gear. Next is the change decel field. The dropdown has a selection of yes or no. Here, it's always recommended to select yes. This is because when stopping a move type instruction, selecting no will cause the axis to attempt stopping as fast as the factory settings allow. This type of stop can cause faults to occur, or in some cases even cause damage to the mechanical system. When yes is selected, the remaining fields in this instruction will be used. If no is selected, then the remaining fields will be ignored. Let's discuss the remaining fields. There's decel, rate, and decel units. These fields allow you to adjust the rate at which the axis will ramp down to zero speed. This is important if the instruction being stopped is a move type instruction, such as an MAM or an MAJ. The change decel jerk, decel jerk, and jerk units fields allow you to control the rate of change in deceleration it's usually recommended to use as much jerk as possible when stopping. For a complete explanation of jerk, I recommend you check out my MAM instruction video. Then there are five status indicator bits. None of these bits tell you anything about the current state of the target axis. They're only diagnostics associated with the given instruction. The EN or enable bit will be true when the rung the instruction is on goes true. The DN or done bit will be true when the motion instruction executes successfully with no errors. The state of the done bit will only update when the EN bit transitions from false to true. The ER or error bit will be true when the motion instruction executes with errors. The state of the error bit will also only update when the enable bit transitions from false to true. The IP or in process bit will be true while the instruction is currently running a task and has not yet finished. The PC or process complete bit will be true when the instruction being stopped has stopped completely. This is usually only relevant for move type instructions. As a note, the PC bit will also only update when the enable bit transitions from false to true. Now let's build the instruction in ladder logic. You can find the MAS instruction under the Motion Move tab of the Ladder Logic Instruction selector. Assign the target axis, then create an instruction tag. It's a good idea to name the instruction tag after the instruction itself. That way, when troubleshooting in the future, it'll be easier to find the tag. Now right-click on the label and select New in order to create the tag in the tag database. As mentioned earlier, the tag will be of type Motion Instruction. Select Create. Now we will need to fill in 
all the fields of the instruction. I find it helpful to start by selecting the units of each field first. It's important to note that the pre-configured scaling is set on the scaling tab of the axis properties. In this case, the units are defined as degrees. Now we know that when the instruction says the word units, it means degrees for this particular application. Let's go back to the instruction. For D cell units, I recommend selecting units per second squared. For D cell jerk units, I recommend selecting percent of time. Now select a stop type from the stop type dropdown. For this example, we will use jog to stop a currently running MAJ instruction. However, take care to select the correct stop type for your given application of this instruction. As recommended earlier, we will select yes for change D cell. We'll enter 460 degrees per second for this example. We'll also select yes for the change D cell jerk and set our D cell jerk to 100% of time. Now compile the code. When the instruction is executed, you can see that the currently running axis comes to a stop. If the error bit turns on when the instruction is executed, then you can examine the error code stored in the instruction tag and use the instruction help file to troubleshoot the error. Now you know the basics of how to properly use and configure the motion axis stop instruction. If you liked this video, please click the like button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when we post new videos. Thanks for watching.